Welcome back to chapter 16. Uh, this chapter is the last chapter in uh, marketing section. Uh, this is an important chapter because it talks about uh, marketing strategies uh, and how the business uh, uh, should uh, design its own marketing mix. Uh, we'll talk about the legal controls that the government usually set uh, for businesses and they are related to marketing. And uh, the last point is talking about the entering new markets for businesses and uh, opportunities and the threats for entering foreign markets. So first, when I say uh, marketing strategy, it's uh, a plan that the business, of course, sets in order to achieve its marketing objectives using its own resources. So let's think about it like this. We know that the marketing mix has uh, four Ps, so product, place, price, promotion. In order to achieve the marketing objectives of the business, like increase in sales, uh, increase in market share, increase brand awareness, uh, customer loyalty, uh, improving brand image, and many, many more marketing objectives, we need a strategy. And this strategy will be designing the appropriate marketing mix, setting suitable prices, doing suitable promotions, etc., 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 in order to achieve the marketing objectives. So this is what we call marketing strategy. So once you set your objectives, you are able to design your, uh, 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 your uh, uh, marketing mix and you are able to take all the decisions related to the four Ps, of course. And don't forget that the business uh, is linked to a marketing budget and the marketing budget is important here because it, uh, it uh, uh, helps uh, uh, the business to identify the types of uh, uh, advertisements to use or promotions or uh, maybe uh, uh, the market research uh, that they should do and of course uh, many other things. So here we are talking about things that are really related, setting the strategy based on a marketing budget, based on the st stage of product life cycle and at the end there is a target which is of course achieving marketing objectives. In your book, there is uh, uh, some activities related to marketing strategy, page 198. Legal controls related to marketing. You will see this word legal controls in many chapters, but uh, uh, every time they are related to something uh, 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 or to a topic. Here in marketing section, we have legal controls uh, related to marketing. In the last section of this book, we have legal controls related to uh, pollution and uh, for example discrimination so uh, I have a lot of, of uh, uh, legal controls of course by the government the government will put the legal controls so here we are talking about the laws that control the activity of the business in terms of marketing that of course will vary from country to country so here we are talking about consumer uh, protection laws we are talking about laws that protect uh, consumers and of course that control how businesses do their job so, uh, for example, businesses are not allowed to do misleading advertisements. They are not allowed to exploit customers. They are not allowed to set uh, fixed prices with their competitors. Uh, 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 consumers have the right to sue the business if, they, if the product is uh, dangerous or a faulty good, for example. So many legal controls. What should I, uh, I know in this uh, chapter or how questions usually are, are uh, designed in this uh, part? So usually they ask about the impacts of legal controls on uh, the business and its strategies. Uh, and this is what I want you to understand. Uh, usually when you, when you see legal controls uh, impact on businesses, first we talk about increasing cost because businesses usually are forced to change their way of doing things. For example, uh, one of the things that might increase the cost uh, is paying fines by the business because they uh, made a faulty good or a misleading advertisement. Uh, sometimes uh, you see an advertisement uh, about a product, for example, and once you go there, you find, uh, uh, you find totally the opposite because uh, the business was trying to attract customers. And of course, this is not allowed. Large companies that dominate the market made 
might face competition laws, of course, because of uh, customers' exploitation. Advertisements may have to be withdrawn and redesigned uh, if they are inaccurate. And of course, uh, uh, businesses have to do advertisements again and they have to pay for some people who, uh, uh, who uh, saw the advertisement and uh, of course they uh, uh, were, uh, let's say, misleaded by the business. So uh, we have many costs when we talk about uh, legal controls, okay? Uh, this is, of course, related to legal controls. Remember, any legal control on marketing activity of the business will increase the business cost. Usually, the questions ask about the legal controls related to consumers and the effect on businesses. So just remember these things. The last point which is important and really easy is the opportunities and problems of entering new markets. You know, businesses try to enter new markets abroad for several reasons. Of course, they want to be uh, popular and want to be familiar. And once, of course, the sales in the market reach the maturity stage, if you remember in, in uh, uh, product life cycle and extension strategies, we said once the product uh, sales reach the maturity, one of the extension strategy was to find new markets. So maybe uh, uh, international markets uh, will be a solution for businesses. So that's why they try to enter new markets abroad. Uh, of course, and nowadays it's, it's possible because of technology and transport links. And uh, this is uh, because of globalization. You will see this in chapter 26, uh, meaning of globalization and how the world now is connected. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, the business uh, uh, will enter new markets because of uh, enhancement in technology and transportation links, because of less trade barriers between countries nowadays. You know, countries now try, try to just reduce any barriers between them so that trading uh, is now uh, uh, available and easier than before. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, opportunities uh, and uh, threats, uh, we can talk about uh, uh, some problems of entering new markets. Uh, first, uh, uh, language difference. Uh, you know, uh, entering new markets usually, uh, especially if, uh, totally different markets, let's say uh, uh, Saudi Arabian business entering a Chinese market for the first time, it will be really hard to understand the culture and the economy there. Uh, that's why uh, businesses uh, uh, do a joint venture, for example, and we'll see that in a moment. Uh, so these are the problems that usually you face, lack of knowledge, increase in transport costs. Sometimes there will be a fluctuation in exchange rate between two countries. Sometimes the legal controls there are heavy or strict, not like your country. Sometimes the culture, the social difference is, is hard on the business. And of course, all these are problems that I'll face when I decide to enter new markets. However, the business will try to overcome these problems. Uh, uh, if I think at the beginning about market research, and one will say, okay, we'll do more market research, this could be done, of course, but market research cannot assure or guarantee that the business will overcome the problems, right? Remember, market research costs a lot of money and entering a new market, uh, knowing nothing about this market, about consumers and competitors, might somehow uh, not be a good way of, uh, of uh, overcoming problems. However, businesses can do this. They can franchise, for example. Uh, you know, many businesses, they just sell franchise. When I sell a franchise to other businesses in other markets, uh, 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 of course, I am expanding. I am uh, getting uh, money from uh, the license uh, and uh, from the sales. And at the same time, if the business, uh, uh, the business that is buying my uh, franchise will benefit from lesser chances of failure and, of course, uh, making profit, but they have to pay a cost. But this is still a way for me as a business to just expand overseas. Another one, licensing, and many businesses, they do this. Just you give a permission to other businesses in other countries to produce your brand. Of course, this will be under license, so they will have a license to produce your products. And a common solution as well is called the joint venture. So let's say a company in Saudi Arabia will make a joint venture with a company in Lebanon just to produce or make a project together. Here we are uh, pooling the risk. And uh, of course, we are uh, sharing the knowledge, but
but sometimes uh, mistakes happen and uh, uh, sometimes the decision making process might be ineffective especially if we have different styles of leadership and this happens a lot especially if businesses are not aware of uh, how manage, uh, managers will manage the business or how uh, the, the business will be managed in the future. So uh, uh, joint venture might be a problem, but it's a, a, a very common way of uh, uh, doing business and overcoming uh, problems of entering new markets that many businesses in this world uh, usually use. Okay, so that's all for chapter 16. And finally, we're done with, uh, with the marketing section. Remember, in marketing, you have to study it as a full package, as I always say. Uh, always remember that product life cycle is important, knowing the stages. Uh, marketing mix is always related to product life cycle. Examiners really love to ask about uh, how uh, to design a uh, marketing mix based on the product life cycle. Just uh, make sure to understand the, the four Ps and make sure to understand the marketing budget and how it's related to my marketing activities. Uh, I always suggest to go back and read the book, of course, and uh, uh, read past papers. Uh, we'll start uh, chapter uh, 17, a new section uh, related to production, break even, and equality, and uh, location. Uh, uh, hopefully, we, uh, uh, we will uh, cover more things uh, uh, related to these chapters later on. Okay, thank you for listening to this video. If you have any comments, uh, please uh, comment and send me an email, and I'm always ready to answer, of course. Thank you so much, and see you in Chapter 17.